Well, we're still on our way to Garage Mall. <laughs> yes, but it's a nice day. It's not snowing, at least. When last we spoke, we were showing you guys Ed's uh, update, directing you over to Ed's movie on the Union Pacific, uh, the update on the big boy. But we want to update you on what we've been doing at Garage Mahal. Yes. The questions keep coming in. Are you guys actually working on that railroad? And what are you doing over oh, there? Oh, yeah. We have so much to get ready to do this. Between your life and my life and combining lives and settling estates, we've now got it now pretty much into corners. Yeah. And, and then for me, once the snow falls, which as you can see, it's done, mm -hmm. uh, then I want to work on a railroad. Yes. And so we've actually been working on it a little bit. The, the progress is slow, but in part because it involves restoring jukeboxes, yeah. and pinball machines. Getting things out of storage. And getting things out of storage. And getting them back out again. One of the things that, that we've been working on is uh, at the garage, uh, if you remember, we started with just a complete mess, tearing down the old recording studio. Oh, gosh. And, Oh my heck, going through all of that. Yeah. And then uh, for the last little while, it's been like move the pile of detritus from here over to there, sort through it, move the pile back over here, sort through it, move it from here to over and there. And that was just his pile. It. And that's just my pile. It didn't include my pile that yeah. I brought to the equation. We have piles. So. Yeah. Um, at any rate, <laughs> <laughs> the most significant thing about what we're doing right now is we're not creating a pile anywhere. No. Um, as we're putting things away, it's actually going away, and instead of anything being in a pile stashed somewhere, yeah. or, well, what do we do with this? Put it in the tough shed. What do we do with this? I'll put it over where the Mustang parks. So where will we put the Mustang? Park it in the driveway for a while. And put it. As we're going forward right now, it's like, well, that's put away forever. Well, yes. not forever, well, but it, it's home. in its place. Everything in its place. <clears throat> And, and everything has a place to be. Right. And this is a first. Right. So we're really close right now to actually having everything put away. Yes. Some bench work up. We're about to lay track. Mm -hmm. I'm working on some more backdrop and so on. Anyway, check it out. This is our progress on that. Oh, <laughs> and we're going to uh, also check in with Steve. Absolutely. In his dismantling of his railroad. Oh, things uh, change. I but, mean, they go back and forth, but life moves on. But as he's building his little dioramas, as he's taking the railroad apart and building his dioramas, he's now getting ideas for his new railroad. And uh, he's going all the way back to the old two-foot gauge railroad that we had years and years and years ago that was a modular railroad that we took around to shows. And he's dug up a section of that, and he's figuring out how to integrate that into the new railroad as he tears the old railroad apart. Uh, we'll, we'll just show you that as we oh, go. That's yeah. Steve's rail. It's a work in progress again. <laughs> so, check this out. <laughs> Updates on two railroads. So the uh, current state of affairs here is looking pretty darn good. I'll say it is. I've got all the lanterns uh, out and about, some of them hooked up for power, some of them not, but they're all on display finally. Isn't that nice? That is. I guess the key here is to not let it get too cluttered, but still have some stuff around. Yes. This is uh, my area of the workshop, my little corner where I like to work on hobbies. Yes, and over here is my side of the workbench with my current project over there, Eureka and Palisade number four. Wow. It's a great place to work on hobbies and even relax. That it is. Now, the other side of the garage is actually the garage. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we keep two of the Mustangs over here, but we also have the game room over here. We have a pinball machine mm -hmm. and a couple of jute boxes which means we want to back the cars out anytime we want to screw around with any of this other stuff. Over here we have a Seabird trash can jukebox. There's quite a story behind this and that's going to be a Tuesday show. I've always loved these old jukeboxes from the war era. They're fun. The light-up era, they called it. And these things happened just, just, just barely before World War II and just barely after World War II. And then the whole era of the light-up jukebox was done. Wow. And, but wow, how neat. No kidding. 
And it was the era of the wood rail pinball machine. Those are just cool. Oh, they're just really amazing. But the look of the whole war era game room is just so great. Now, the pinball also has quite a story behind it. It sure does. A lot of history, and uh, that will also be a Tuesday show. We started by just cleaning it up. Uh, <laughs> there had been cats living. Yes, it had you know, been a cat house. <laughs> it had been a cat house. <laughs> and uh, But it cleaned up really, sure. really nice. And uh, yep. need to do a little tiny bit of work on the mechanism and so on. But generally speaking, it works just fine. It just needed a lot of cleanup. One of the things about these old mechanical uh, pinball machines, there really isn't all that much to go wrong with. <laughs> no. This thing's been just badly treated and left outside and all kinds of problems. And yet as soon as I plugged it in, it, it actually worked quite well. Right. As I was sanding on this, I found that it was sanding out beautifully and the wood tone underneath is just magnificent. So most of the railroad here in the garage is 20.3 scale and I'm using the technique of using the styrofoam insulation from Home Depot, two inch thick uh, foam insulation. It's so stupidly easy to work with, you can cut it practically with your fingers. I prefer a saw. But another advantage is it doesn't weigh anything. And as I want to have all of the sections of this railroad on the upper level removable so I can work on them uh, down at a reasonable level, having them very, very easy to lift into place is key. I'm using just a really, really basic saw uh, designed for cutting miters and stuff. Picked it up at Home Depot. But uh, with this foam, if you're doing straight line cuts, once you figure out where you want to put your cut, all you need to do is score a line with the saw, hang it over the edge of the bench and snap it off. And it breaks off quite cleanly. Actually working on a layout is new for me, but this is fun working with this foam and shaping it. And this is what a lot of people have gone to using and uh, I can see why. It's really easy and fun. And lightweight. And lightweight, <laughs> all good stuff. I painted the backdrop up here for the railroad several years ago and then later on I got the idea to cut the sky away with a, an X-Acto knife and then paint the sky on the wall behind the backdrop and then have the backdrop just slightly out ahead of the wall. That way I could put an LED strip, an RGB LED strip behind the backdrop to do sunset lighting effects. It's sure neat to have the sunset work this way. Isn't this cool? I've never seen it on another railroad, but I just sort of had the idea to do it this way. And well, now that we've messed around with it a little bit, I've got some ideas on how to do it even better. Good. I got this little section from Steve. He wanted to build a half inch scale railroad and then he abandoned that project and gave it to me. He had laid it with code 148 rail. Looks really, really good. I really love the stonework on this little building. Boy, that reminds me of where I'm from. A lot of the houses are built that way. Yeah, no kidding. All those little stone buildings and oolite houses and stuff. Right. This was just a leftover that I had from a railroad I built years ago, and I'm repurposing it to go up here. The little freight house was actually built by Al. Oh, really? And he signed and dated the bottom of it. Well, how nice. Didn't know he'd done that, but I found that when I was messing around with it. Now, clear over on the other side of the room is the switching yard for the lower level. And uh, I'm laying all of this in Lagos Creek rail. And these are Lagos Creek switches. Picked them up from our friend Adam. This is laid in a somewhat heavier rail. So let's take a break and run over to Steve's. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wanted to follow up with what he's been up to. There seems to be a hole. Yeah, this is, uh, he tore out the buildings over here. There was a whole pond and everything. Oh my. I, I do have pictures of what it looked like before he ripped it all apart. 
looked like this. Yes. Now, it was always a very, very difficult area to get to, and that's why he decided to tear it out. Uh, I had to crawl up through the bottom of the layout and open the bottom of the pond and stick my head up through in order to get these pictures. And that's the kind of thing that he's trying to avoid on any future railroad. But how neat was this little area back in here? Unfortunately, no one could see it. <laughs> not, not easily. <laughs> not easily. Now that one little mill building had actually started off on our old, old club layout, you know, over 10 years ago, 20 years ago. And we had to dismantle this railroad in 2008. And so Steve repurposed this little building and moved it over to his own railroad. And look at it now. Oh my goodness. So that whole little section's been turned into a diorama and repurposed yet again and it's just turning out to be one of the neatest little dioramas he's done. No kidding. Uh, although they're all turning out to be really, really neat. This one's almost done, and we'll do a whole show on it as soon as he gets all the lighting and everything installed. But it's, it's almost finished. That's neat. You know, Steve's technique for doing water is the most amazing I've ever seen. It's wonderful. I mean, it looks real. It looks real, and all it is is paint. And here's another diorama that he's working on. This one's only about half done, but uh, he tore out the giant canyon, my favorite place on the whole railroad. This is what it looked like before he dismantled it. And now it's becoming another diorama. It's starting to look really good. No kidding, it's, it's only about half done, but uh, wow. Oh, no kidding, <laughs> wonderful. Just like all the others, it's just turning out really, really amazing. Well, there's one thing about having to pull the cars outside in order to work on the railroad. <laughs> means you have to pull them back inside when we're done. A little bit of playing around there. <laughs> a little bit of playing around, but any excuse to drive the Mustangs around. Exactly. Exactly. What a, and it's a great way to just sort of finish up the work session. Exactly. So anyway, that's what we've been up to. Yes, a <laughs> lot of up to. A lot of up to. Round two, it's an up to. Yeah, that's right. We we actually <laughs> got her round to it and put it away. We did it, finally. The round to it has a place and it's in its place. So, I so brought this it is, with me. This is all progress. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve is is making an enormous amount of progress oh. tearing his railroad apart. Yeah. But it's kind of exciting because he's building these incredible dioramas and uh, actually planning this much simpler, smaller railroad. And we're all looking forward to that. And right. as, a, as a group, we've been sort of throwing around this idea of uh, what do you do when the railroad outgrows your house and you're of a certain age and you're having trouble taking care of it and so on. Right. So it's a, it's a major issue on our minds. Yes. And Steve is actually physically addressing it uh, by tearing his railroad apart and repurposing right. it. But plus it keeps you busy, so you don't get complacent with things. Yes. You've got to stay busy. You've got to keep yeah. your mind active, especially when you get older. That's right. So retirement has its interesting challenges, mm -hmm. and, and that's one of them. Right. Stay busy. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, pop on over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, do subscribe. Mm -hmm. It helps us, and it helps you, because then you'll get notified. Yes. You can also share stuff with people if you right. want to do that. That's always a handy thing. Right. But... Uh, the key is subscribe, <laughs> and the easy way to subscribe is point the blue button right there. Yes. says subscribe. Yes. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here again in a few days. A few with days. the Tuesday show. <laughs> we'll see, see ya. Bye bye. <laughs> Goodbye.